good evening to all i am dr kumar guru working as a conservation scientist on behalf of bcf ngo based at tamil nadu in india with the vision is visualizing society for promoting and assisting healthy coexistence of human and wildlife and ultimately ensuring conservation of biodiversity so strategic implementation of this session draws us to handle research and reaching stakeholders in synchronized manner our research includes from ants to elephants and exploring effective management practices in the perspective of biodiversity conservation with our wide research expertise team we are able to walk from nagapattinam to valley of flower himalayas stretching across different landscapes and different people and very dependency on the ecosystem in nutshell we connect nature with people people with nature so let's get connected today also in the virtual platform to existence and experience nature in enhanced dimension thank you all thank you for joining today bcf international webinar again welcome all of you for the today's uh, speak on fear of shark and uh, i am associating with the shark education institute spain and uh, i am the correspondent for them too and uh, on behalf of them also i am presenting this one so a while uh, bcf approached me about the topic then why we choose this one not only because we are working on shark or something like that because this is uh, some of the primary requirement that uh, most of the people should know a uh, uh, majority we don't know much factors about the shark so uh, considering into that also in point of conservation i uh, we choose this topic area so today discussion outline we will be uh, dealing into the following pillars and based upon the why are the sharks and why the fear of shark the facts and myths of the sharks and the general behavior i will be concentrating more on the feeding and breeding because that is what mostly in relation with the fear of shark for the human and a bit a uh, little bit about the shark management aspects also will be dealing with so uh, we will enter into the first sharks why it is shark of course we all knew about shark we all heard about shark and some of you are seeing in live uh, in the marine environment the sharks and we have uh, heard a lot much of stories about shark too and we have uh, really uh, have uh, some sort of uh, predefined or uh, predetermined uh, uh, thing in our mind regarding the shark right so uh, when we start about the shark we should know a little bit background of him so this is the last of the major fish group appear in the fossil record so that's what as per the romer the vertebrate paleontologist has reported that uh, he stated that it is a, a major among the major fish groups what we are uh, having now in that that is the uh, most one appear in the fossil record that shows that how long it is on earth and uh, generally it is comes under the uh, class chondrichthys so it's a cartilaginous fishes uh, which consists of the two subclasses of elasmobranchi and holocephale so elasmobranchi consists of all the uh, sharks rays and skate it's all comes under that particular subclass which is having a plate gills so you can see in the shark in the sideways a gill slit like opening not like the other fishes so those are all comes and all so the cartilaginous bone there is no bone is there so cartilaginous fishes and the holocephale is the entire head mostly a very fascinating thing is the ghost fish and the ray fish or rabbit fish elephant fishes thinking herrings everything which is having an iridescence emitted by them so iridescence obviously you know that it is just like a, uh, gradually changing the color of the angle of the view then based upon that the color will be changing for example when we uh, childhood days we used to give the uh, gas soap bubbles when we make when the bubble is uh, flowing over the air we can see different types of colors are forming over that one so that's the iridescence level so uh holocephale is having that capacity to make iridescence because mostly they are the bottom dwelling animal so apart from that the evolutionary vertebrates uh, uh had been is also mentioned that the sharks are successful living in on earth for a very very long years of time because of the they are the aggressive fish and they're quite capable of uh, taking care of themselves in self in spite of the changes what all the changes happen to the earth so far and the uh, change in the food supply and the competitors so it uh, the paleontological studies have been revealed that very clearly that the sharks are living on earth for a long time back and it is faced a lot much of changes which has happened over the earth and uh, 
that it survives and come across and we know that dinosaurs in between it lost and likewise many organisms have been uh, extinct totally out of earth even up, based upon the change what happened on the earth but still the sharks are continuing to live in a different form so of course forms have been a little bit changes are there and species variation also happened but even then the particular uh, organism is still living on earth because of its uh, based upon these basic qualities so here are some of the uh, common uh, shark uh, which is found in the oceans all around the world so some of you might have seen uh, the uh, some shark especially the whale shark most of you are familiar and the hammerhead shark based upon its uh, appearance it will be very catching by the people even though others looks alike for the common man but even then there is there are a lot of difference between the species in its body shape and structure and the color so here comes the paleontological evidence of the megalodon so that is one of the biggest shark ever lived on earth so in the picture you can see uh, the male and the female uh, megalodon shark and also an infant and at present compared to the shark of course the whale shark is there even then the white shark when you see it has got a very uh, similarity very much similarity with the megalodon which is an extinct species megalodon means the big tooth and uh, they lived millions of years ago and uh, very close relatives of the white shark we believe because based upon its uh, appearance and the other basic features what we have studied but the size has been changed a lot you can see from the size uh, of course it's not up to the scale but even then to show how a person uh, you can see on the photo the person who is standing above the megalodon female how small he is and also when you compare to the white shark how uh, small it is when compared to the megalodon which lived on earth millions of years ago and obviously all the mythical stories have been evolved based upon the megalodon only so when it comes into the phylogeny and the affinities of elasma branches uh, most of the species which is uh, giving uh, of course uh, for the people who is not from uh, much background for the student side phylogeny mostly we say for the study of uh, different groups of organisms and their evolutionary development so that means the traces of evolutionary history of all life on the planet we will be considering and based upon that we will uh, see the evolutionary history path of that particular organism that is the way we said that megalodon and the white shark is having a similar family resemblance is there and that is the way how the size group has been changed for the present year also we are saying so based on that the members in the elasmobranchia family is uh, both living and extinct species are there some of them are still living and some of them are already extinct and uh, yet another peculiar feature for this one is the largest fish in the ocean is belongs to this that is the whale shark which can grow up to 18 meter and the smallest shark is also belong to this that is spiny pygmy shark which can grow maximum of 28 uh, centimeter and also some others are there on the variant uh, length of uh, 26 to 35 centimeter and also the largest race that is the manta race of uh, six meter width and uh, more than 1360 kilogram weight is also belongs to this so here comes the peculiarity for this particular subclass elasma branche because it consists of both the living and the extinct with the largest and the smallest group belongs into that and also all the species in these groups are carnivorous and uh, most of the elasma branches are primitive groups whereas the shark skates and rays uh, is highly developed creatures so still uh, we are uh, able to see them in the present century even. So it shows its uh, phylogenetic evolution from the prehistoric period till and now how it is being changed. Then yet another major feature for its survival is the absence of bone. As I said, it is a cartilaginous bone. It is not as the uh, real bone as what we see it into the other uh, fishes what we consume. So it is a secondary adaptation. Then the fossil records obviously uh, shows the contractitians appears the fossil record from 375 million years ago onwards. So that is the Devonian period of the Paleozoic era period onwards. It has been reported with the different paleological studies have been proved that one uh, based upon the spines and isolated foods which is present in the fossilites. Mostly we have getting 
and also flourished during the carboniferous period through the mesozoic era that is around 160 million years and till present so these all are the evidences that how sturdy these particular organisms are and how long it is living on earth even beyond our existence start on earth it starts living on earth when it evolutionary path as i said that elasmobranchi and holocephalae level as we discussed in the earlier so the holocephalae from there to the elasmobranchi uh, the modified or the modern versions of the sharks rays and skates have been evolved so that is what at the present uh, level we are seeing in our waters So let's uh, see a little bit of its uh, speed. Of course, when compared to all the organisms which is uh, present, it is comparatively uh, less in speed because the 13.8 meter per second, only the short fin macro uh, as the highest speed uh, in the shark, among the sharks. When compared to our Usain Bolt, who is the 10.4 meter per second, when compared to him, he is, the short fin macro is even faster. <laughs> Obviously, the other organisms are even faster than the land-based organisms and the sailfish is also uh, faster than this. But even then, they keep its pace in the speed. So let's watch a, watch a small clip. So now that is what about the shark. So these all are the some of the major aspects. We will be having a small discussion today's uh, level. So this is the one of the advertisement which arrived in New York Americans in July 12, uh, 1916. That is more than 100 years before uh, to the present time. So one way to avoid shark attack is to swim in a pool. Because that is the period where the shark attack, the name, the in quotes, I can say the attack, but it is not attack. We will be coming to know at the end of the session. So uh, this is the one of the funniest uh, thing has been raised as an advertisement in the newspaper because people were having a lot of myth on shark. So we will be just moving out of the myth and see that one. Uh, many of you, you uh, people who are here are much familiar uh, with the photo what you are seeing on the right side of, side of the screen and uh, this is what created a lot of uh, misconception about the shark to the public this is the poster of the famous movie jaws so definitely whoever see this one definitely we will be having our own imagination to think ourselves on the place of the person who is swimming and uh, seeing a shark with this much sharp knife like teeth uh, below in the water looking to us so you can uh, feel that sensation for a small period of time now so you will get your own fear fact you will trigger it is not the shark which is triggering so you yourself is triggering your fear factor in your mind that's what happening so the same way as per the psychological thing it is said that the excessive and persistent fear of shark they gave a terminology dot galeophobia so that is usually the sufferer of galeophobia will be having even if the person is on boat or in an aquarium or on a beach even then they were their anxiety will trigger them up and uh, they will start fearing upon to the sharks even if they see it in the aquarium tank or even in the boat sitting and seeing a long distance so this is what uh, we say that 
that fear fact is triggered by ourselves, not by the shark. It is not doing anything because it is living it on its own environment. Otherwise, we can say that they are living in their home and peeping into their home and we are saying that I am afraid of that and they are threatening it. That's what we are doing, right? So the trigger factors when it comes, it can be uh, several factors, maybe something related to the uh, past events with the shark either happen directly or indirectly to the uh, sufferer and also the media news and the things that makes a lot of course i can guarantee say more than 80 percent of us or even 90 percent of us might have got the trigger of fear factor based upon the media the movies and other things seeing in movie that shark is chasing the swimmer swimmer is turning left then shark also will turn left swimmer is turning right then shark also will turn right so swimmer is entering into the boat shark will jump over the boat and get these all things we are seeing in the movies by sure of course for movie sake of a uh, thing point when we think it's just for a point but uh, these all things will make a trigger uh, for us to uh, generate the fear factor on the shark so this is what actually happened to all of us so how do we get over the fear of shark so one of the best way to overcome the fear so we have seen uh, we, majority people are having a fear on shark that uh, about the shark attack etc etc seeing that one so uh, to overcome the fear of shark it is better to swim along with them so you can see into the uh, side by a uh, photo you can see the uh, divers are along with the shark without any fear and shark is not at all attacking them too so that is one of the best way to get rid of the fear out of the shark so and nowadays obviously many opportunities are there for uh, the common man also uh, to swim along with the shark or also to move uh, to the under uh, water and uh, look around with the sharks so many of the aquarium facilities are there, even in from the safer side, within the glass premise, you can watch the shark movement as if it are very close uh, underwater aquarium, as well as the uh, made uh, tunnel aquariums are available. So that way also you can uh, be uh, get rid of the fear of the shark is one of the way. So here, obviously, you will not be having a fear factor because uh, you it, the sharks are in a controlled environment. So you feel yourself as a safe. So uh, your fear will be uh, down or your fear factor will be down because uh, obviously sharks are under the uh, controlled environment. And also when you dive uh, and move to the shark, of course, uh, several countries are offering for the shark diving. So then obviously it is a little uh, adventurous uh, dive itself is an adventurous dive. So uh, that way also we, you can get rid of and once you uh, mix with them, then you will understand that they are really very shy. With my personal experience also, I can say that uh, several times I have dived in the shark uh, bank areas and uh, never ever uh, none of the shark is chased or come behind us or even come closer to us until and otherwise we close with them. So uh, this is one of the thing most of the countries now offering uh, the non swimmers and also for in a safer side level to avoid the fear pack. So uh, they are uh, putting the cage dives also, especially South Africa, Egypt and all they are practicing this one. So cage dive is there, so easily you can be in a safe, you will be having a safer side. Uh, so you, but you can see very closely and you will be able to understand that they are really, really shy organisms. So uh, now let's move on to the world uh, shark bite incidents. Obviously, uh, being a shark person, we will be using the shark bite incidents only rather than the attack that you will come to know when it comes, uh, when you read the uh, data what is shown in the right hand side so for the uh, past <clears throat> 10 years data is given so out of the uh, shark bite incidents uh, given for each year so the total fatal incidents for the 10 years it is only 60 and the remaining 734 are other non-fatal incidents so 10 years only 60 fatal incidents again this 60 fatal if we take then definitely there will be the fatality is due to yet another factors will be there it is not like the shark is coming for the searching for the human and coming and uh, uh, biting so even though when you say out of 10 years only 60 incidents means it is very 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 rare or in the coming slides also you will come to know that how uh, it is uh, very very low but we are even then projecting it too much for the shark bite incidents so uh, these all are the some of the common uh, bite incidents reported area in the bigger black circle area uh, mostly the south africa australia and the us 
and all over the world uh, it has been reported that, but the fatality as i said that it is very 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 uh, less in volume so uh, with that we will enter into the facts and myths of the shark because a lot of uh, myths are there which should be supported by certain facts so obviously uh, when we think about the shark obvious shark is a critical part of the marine environment because it is one um, or one no it is the toppest predator in the marine environment so it is to be protected because any uh, change uh, happen to the predator level or the shark population then it will be consequently affecting the lower uh, prey predator relationships too so it is highly uh, essential to protect the shark because it's a critical part of the marine environment and many of the government and non governmental organizations are working over uh, mostly on the vulnerable fish population most of the vulnerable fish population and uh, now it has been included in the shark population also uh, majority people started working governmental and non governmental so most uh, threatened sharks and rays are received attention what they reserve now and uh, there, there are several measures uh, started taking all over the world to make the sustainable catch and also uh, legal trading of the shark and the shark's product so we could able to bring at least when compared to the past years now we are able to bring it into a little bit sustainable level of uh, utilization of shark and also the trading of sharks and the shark materials especially for the souvenirs and shark liver oil skin and also the uh, bones all these things so trading also it has been uh, controlled by uh, certain uh, agencies international agencies so uh, let us enter into uh, the facts and myths so i have, there are a lot of myths are there about the shark so i have selected only five which is uh, quite relevant with commonly people will be looking into so let's go with the first myth how important are sharks so that is the first myth whether shark is important or not so uh, first of all when we see as an economical point of view nowadays in world over the tourism majority of the tourism in the coastal line tourisms are uh, running with the shark diving especially the countries like maldives bahamas egypt fiji and even south africa now started so uh, these all are uh, having the shark diving facilities and a lot many of the tourists divers as well as the non divers as we have seen earlier in the cage so even the divers as well as the non divers are moving uh, to uh, check with the shark diving so economical point of view nowadays it is giving a very good income so it's important shark is important then uh, many of the shark species uh, when it is uh, taken is placed up to the top of the food chain as uh, i said earlier uh, it is the top predator so it is the top on the food chain so uh, it is actually balancing the marine food chain as well as the food web then being a top predator what is happening the animal population will check and easing the grazing pressure on the seagrass and coral so uh, controlling the prey predator relationship is clearly controlled by the sharks so uh, with that the extreme pressure or the grazing pressure over the seagrass and coral by the other small fishes will be getting reduced because shark is consuming them so a balancing uh, nature of the prey predator relationship is happening because of the shark in the marine environment then uh, maintain the delicate balance of the life in the marine environment it plays a major major role because in a different uh, level it has got an influence over the whole uh, marine population so uh, seeing into that all facts when we look into so in terms of ecological point of view as we discussed in the last three points shark is important and in the commercial and economical point of view when we look into uh, the tourism economic uh, when we uh, look in that way also it is very very important so that myth has been cleared now then a uh, second myth are all sharks with uh, lots of sharp teeth obviously you all are uh, familiar that the especially obviously the movie jaws actually made all the threaten against the shark so whenever the shark is there in the movies you can see that very very sh very uh, sharp uh, teeth will be uh, projecting out and it will be coming to bite so uh, as we discussed earlier around 542 different species of sharks with the different shapes and size groups have been uh, reported so far all around the world and it depends upon the shape and the size the tooth size also will be varying 
apart from the diet and the feeding habit of the shark. So based upon the dietary as well as the feeding habit, and also depends upon the size group, I will be showing in the next slide for the different size of uh, teeth. So the teeth uh, num uh, size also will be varying. And uh, yet another important and the uh, major fact is that sharks continuously shed their teeth and replace. We humans, of course, uh, mostly uh, once in a lifetime, uh, we will be uh, shedding, especially in the uh, younger stage. When the growing up stage, we will be milk teeth will be moving out and we will be getting the permanent teeth. So uh, <clears throat> that way, when we say uh, shark in the whole lifetime, it is continuously shedding. For example, if uh, carcarinous forms, when we see around 35,000 teeth, uh, will be falling and replacing in its uh, whole uh, lifetime. So uh, that level, it is very clear that it is uh, teeth is also um, making changes uh, all around its lifetime of the shark. So obviously, sharks have a lot of teeth and a lot of teeth are shedding and uh, replacing it back too. So here you can see from Megalodon onwards, all the shark teeth are very clearly seen here. So a different size group uh, based upon the shark it has been uh, shown. So size group varies. If the bigger shark, the obviously the bigger teeth. Smaller sharks, obviously the smaller teeth. But uh, never ever you can see a teeth like that, what you are seeing in the movies, like the uh, saw-like structure, very sharp level. Obviously, sharpness is there because it is a carnivore, but not like what we are seeing in the movie, right? Now let's move on to the uh, uh, third myth that all sharks are man-eaters. So, okay, this is a very relevant question. Uh, mostly people are interested to know this one. And the people are having a lot of myth that sharks come and eat the people. And we are seeing in movies, uh, very clearly we, they are showing that shark is coming and taking the human as a whole and eating and going. It's quite impossible, honestly. As a marine biologist and as a shark specialist, I can say it is not at all possible. <clears throat> so let us see the facts over that one. So when we look into the menu of the shark, we can see fishes, crustaceans, mollusks, plankton, krill, um, marine mammals, and other even smaller sharks. Bigger sharks will eat smaller sharks. So other sharks. These all are the uh, things. Obviously, earlier slides also we have discussed. So this is the what the food menu of the shark. Where is the human in the menu? It is not seen, right? So a uh, shark is having a diversity of feeding behavior. <clears throat> So uh, the thing is, as we discussed in the preliminary stage, the biggest uh, shark, that is the biggest animal in the world, that is a whale shark, and they don't eat, that is, they are not carnivores, that is just planktivores, that means strain the plankton through the modified gills and eat. So that is herbivore it is. So they never touch any of the fishes or even human. And it is very friendly also. Uh, some few times I got a good opportunity to dive along with the whale shark too. So it was a really good experience and they are very uh, friendly to human. Then certain uh, kind of a bottom dwelling sharks are also there like the nurse shark. So they will inhale the food into their mouth. That means just with the suction uh, from the uh, bottom, uh, the sand, it will be eating. And also some uh, midwater and the pelagic or uh, subpelagic uh, sharks are there and they will be also feeding upon the uh, the earlier said food menu items only, not the human. So that is also, that myth is also getting ruled out that sharks are not a man-eater and it can't eat a human as what we are seeing in the uh, movie. It can't, uh, because it is actually engulfing or it is actually swallowing the whole thing. So a whole human, a live human as a whole, a uh, shark can't swallow directly. It is quite impossible to. Now let's move on to the fourth myth. Can anything hurt shark? This is a real thing. What being a human, we are supposed to think about. Whether anything can hurt shark. Still, till uh, uh, now and uh, everywhere, we can see that how shark is hurting to the human. But we never ever, most of us uh, will never think that whether anything else hurt the shark. Of course, let's see the fact. So the sharks are often caught as a bycatch in the long line, trawler, sea net. And uh, mostly the bycatches will be discarded because the shark meat is not much uh, favorable to many of the uh, communities. And uh, it is not utilizing too. 
so but it is a quiet usually a large bycatch when we use the long lines and trolls and the uh, seal nets so normally uh, once the catch come uh, they discard that means they will be just throwing it back by the time it will be dead when they take and segregate the fish and find the shark and throw back into the sea by the time it will be dead and obviously the fisherman will be cutting the fin and taking the fin because it is having a value but the whole shark is that means a huge shark is taking only for the four or five fins of it remaining whole mass of the body is thrown out for nothing and uh, yet another thing when we see about the growth rate of the shark it is a very slow growth rate animal maturation and reproduction will be taking many years uh, so normally the younger ones are commonly found like in the other fishes very uh, large quantities of uh, juveniles and younger ones we can find but when the shark comes it's quite uh, rare to find the younger one because the gestation period is we'll be seeing later so the gestation period will be quite uh, large and when we threw as a discard as a bycatch when we discard it they they are dead so how do we recoup that uh, unwanted discarded organism back into the nature it takes years which will be quite difficult to replace as what it was earlier so <clears throat> one of the things the lack of management of shark fishing growing demand of shark fins so what is happening management is failure or management is not working in a shark uh, the fishery management is not working properly so generally all over the world the fishermen whenever they get the shark they just cut the fins and throw back the uh, body into the ocean for nothing because shark fin only is having a higher value so there we are losing a lot of sharks when compared to its uh, replenishment to the particular environment so this make a rapid reclining in the shark population so unregulated unprotected and illegal fishing will be trapping the whole uh, population into a extinct stage so now you can think that with this we know sharks are getting hurt they are just taking in live condition they are just uh, uh, cutting off their fins and throwing it back just like somebody uh, assume that we are in the position of the shark and sharks are in our position and the sharks want our hands and taking hands and legs taking us into the boat and cut our leg and hand and throwing us into the water we can't even swim we can't do anything we have to die no other option shark also when fin cut they can't swim they will die so the same thing so who is getting uh, who is hurting who we are the real hurters for the shark not the shark so that is all about the uh, fourth myth and the fifth one do shark attack human often this is also uh, one of the important uh, thing because very often he we uh, hear shark attack here there and all but now we have seen the statistical data out of 10 years only 60 fatal incidents of the shark bite has been reported so whether do shark attack human very often obviously oceans are there all over the world and 75 percent of the earth is covered with the ocean and oceans are there for the fishes including the shark it's not for us uh, we have our own place the land so sharks are in the world ocean they are present in the ocean and shark fatal incidents we have seen it is extremely rare out of uh, 10 years only 60 minutes it is too rare and Shark incidents in 2019, a total incidence is reported 64, and out of that, only two were fatal. And again, as I, I told earlier, the fatality may be due to some other fact also. We have to go behind uh, the real fact of the uh, fatality incident. It may be leading to yet another things. Some of the things we will be discussing uh, later. So uh, total average catch per year uh, from top 20 catches from 2007 to 2017 when we uh, look into the catch statistics of the shark uh, around 594,000 uh, metric tons approximately per year is being taken so who is taking who? human or shark is taking us so again when we say we Indian India Spain and Indonesia remain in the top uh, three uh, shark catchers in the world so we uh, in india we are also not bad so <clears throat> so this is the condition so 
are they affecting human directly no it is only fatalities too then incidents happening because of so many other reasons that also will be uh, some of the things we will be seeing so that is also getting ruled out so i have taken only a few myth uh this is very uh, frequently asked by the people so i just choose it for the presentation here so who attack whom is the thing uh one we have to think now whether we attack the shark or shark attack us it's a point to think now so now here you see uh 1500 around 500 years data uh gathered together so 1582 to 2014 periodicity the major uh, great white shark incidents have been reported only 80 tiger shark only 31 bull shark only 20 one incidents and 10 other uh, commonly appeared species it is reported only 23 it is out of 500 around 500 years so now again you can think of whether uh, the incidents are uh, really as big as what it is projected out or in reality it is very very less obviously it is very less because out of 580 31 21 and 23 is nothing in front of the 500 years time So with that, the shark fact versus the myth, when we see, uh, as I said earlier, uh, 2007 to 2017, Indonesia was the top global uh, shark catchers with 110, uh, thousand, uh, 100, uh, 110,000 uh, metric ton per year catch has been reported from Indonesia. And 80% of the uh, recent catch accounted for the Atlantic Ocean. 70% of uh, shark and ray species are listed as critically endangered during this period. So, in the uh, catch rate is increasing, area of the catch is also increased, and also finally we concluded that 17% of the sharks and rays species will be, uh, we have finally uh, listed under critically endangered species. So, again, the previous question, who attacks whom? shark attack us or we attack shark obviously we attack shark that is only it is coming to be a critically endangered species whereas human never ever comes to critically endangered species so far on earth right so this is the uh, uh data uh just to uh show you so you can see that indonesia spain and india is the top most three rank from 2007 to 17 so top 20 level when we take we are still uh the uh, india also still standing in the third position uh, continuously so let us uh this is the myth and based upon that now let us uh, see uh, some of the facts how this uh, fatality incidents or the shark uh, uh in the bite incidents are happening and uh, so for that i'll uh, take you to a little bit shark behavior aspects so one of the basic behavior for the shark is the feeding behavior so shark as we said that it is a top predator so uh, transfer energy between the upper tropic level within the marine ecosystem as a whole so uh, the top predator is the controller for the whole energy level within the ecosystem so it's a uh, <clears throat> industrial is a spiral valve type industrial and so it is a very primitive design when it comes to uh, any other uh, presently available organisms on earth so as we discussed earlier shark has been evolved for millions and millions years ago and it is withstanding for all the changes what happened on earth so this industry spiral valve like industry is one of the primitive design which also uh, we assume the shark biologists are assuming that that may be one of the reason it can survive even after the uh, several changes have happened then uh, the dynamics of prey consumption and the processing of food in elasmo branches uh, is large behind the studies because still a lot of studies have been originated and uh, still uh, one of the major factor or even when i was doing my study with the shark also the major constraint is uh, uh, regarding the specimen when it is a smaller thing obviously we can catch this is already endangered species so just for a normal study we can't catch <coughs> so, some uh, 20 30 uh, shark and bring it to the lab or do the things only the live condition we have to check so maximum without affecting the population we have to do so uh, there are certain constraints for the studies so the studies are still lagging behind than when uh, we compare to the studies of the other fishes and the, the stomach content uh, were described a lot even i have done uh, 
when along with the studies of age determination and the population time, the stomach content. But the rate of consumption, feeding pat pattern, and the fate of food uh, things to be, these all uh, areas we are uh, still unable to get into a clear cut con uh, conclusion in studies because, as I said earlier, one the major thing is the availability of the specimen to sacrifice. Obviously, we are smaller fishes, obviously, we can take a few uh, from the cohort group and we can sacrifice it and study. But if here, it is already endangered, so we can't take it for sacrificing. So through other mode of levels, only we can do the study. So still, it is going in a very uh, slow pace. So this feeding is having a very big importance into the shark behavior in relation with the bite incidents too. So uh, what you are seeing is uh, the feeding behavior that is called the feeding frenzy behavior of the shark. Most of the animals have the feeding frenzy behavior, whereas the sharks exhibits comparatively quiet, higher uh, feeding frenzy behavior. So that's what you are seeing. See, you can see that a diver is uh, sitting very close to uh, the sharks and to observe and to take the photos, but even then they are not biting him. So let us see what is a feeding frenzy behavior. So it occurs when the predators are overwhelmed uh, by the amount of prey available. It's natural. When food is less and the consumers are more, then definitely the competition will arise. So that is what here also it happens. So normally, when they get the food in the wild, uh, only few it will be getting. So one uh, once they get the, the food, then obviously the others also, other sharks, because mostly it will be in a uh sure uh, in a school level only it will be going so then others also will be surrounding so that is uh, one of the feeding frenzy habit so what will happen everyone will be competing for the food which is available in that particular area so what will happen that competition will be making even bite with each other or struggling with each other all these things so in between that anybody go they don't bother they don't see who is it or what is it they just bite so that is what the competitive behavior for the food. Obviously, humans are also have that one. But fortunately, we are uh, civilized people and we have our own food to find and get and store. And we are using like that. So we are not showing the feeding frenzy behavior. But all the organisms are having this feeding frenzy behavior. So that is one of the major thing for the uh, coming into the shark bite uh, incidents are also happening. Because at this time, uh, anything... Uh, And uh, when it moves, the other uh, group also following that one to get the food. So obviously, it is natural competition uh, in the marine environment, competition for getting the food too. So here, you can, it's a consecutive photos. So now, once it's uh, coming down, all are jumping uh, to uh, eat the food. And all are uh, very voraciously eating and moving around. So this is the feeding frenzy behavior. It is a competitive nature of every animal, including the shark. So in between, if something happened and somebody is there, then they don't see whether they don't know it is a human or something. Just they will bite. Even sharks bite themselves also because it is a competition to get the food for them. So this is yet another one with the smaller fish. So. Uh, that is the feeding frenzy behavior now you have seen so it is quite common in all the organisms and shark is also having that feeding frenzy behavior then uh yet another question is that uh do sharks go crazy when they smell the blood obviously many of you have seen in the movies when the blood stain comes then shark is uh, coming towards the blood stain thing so uh technically or scientifically when we uh, ask this question do shark go crazy when they smell the blood Yes, of course, the scent of blood arose the shark and they think of an easy meal. The same way when we are hungry walking over the road and uh, getting a nice smell of a chicken fry or something like that, then we also feel that, okay, nearby somewhere, something hotel or restaurant is there, so we will try to find it out, right? So that is also, again, it is an animalistic behavior for including us we have. So here also, they, when they sense the blood, they think that there is an easy meal is around. They don't think as what you are seeing in the movie like that. Okay, a man is there, so I had to go and eat. No, 
okay a food is available so that only the smell is keeping so that they sense that smell so when more than one shark show up into that particular scenario as you have seen in the earlier photos then the problem or the competition starts problem no actually it's a competition it is again uh, we can't say it as a problem it is a competition by the animal for the survival of the fittest we also do that competition in a different way <clears throat> in different way and in different areas uh everywhere we are also uh, competing with each other's too without competition there is no existence of any animals too healthy competition so here also when they find an easy food when other sharks are also pop up into that particular area as we have seen in the earlier photo then the competition shark so everyone will try to get that particular food then it will be uh, biting each other or it will be uh, hitting each other then all will have a feeding frenzy behavior but again as we have seen earlier with the meal of uh, the menu of the shark mostly they prefer the meal on seal sea lion and other marine mammals and the fishes crustacean mollusks plantains and krill never ever they prefer a human being that is also a fact so that uh, point is clear obviously blood sense but it is not uh, the sense of a blood of a human is there like that <clears throat> it is sensing that okay some easy meal is available so it get uh sense the blood and go crazy in the sense it is not a crazy running for the food so here some of the uh major uh or the common uh sharks the white shark short fin macro long fin macro salmon shark and port beagle uh, poor beagle shark have been shown so these all are some of the common thing available uh living in the ocean for a long long years so uh food preference when we take as we said the smell of the blood obviously they feel that okay there is a uh food available so then next again as the same way the food preference so when you go and ask the shark with a menu a bleeding sea lion and a bleeding human regarding the blood i am talking as we discussed in the earlier slide so we are in the menu assume that the shark is in a restaurant and we are the uh, supplying person and uh, going there and asking to take the uh, order and asking for the bleeding sea lion and bleeding human definitely shark will ask only for the bleeding sea lion not the bleeding human because it is not in their preference too. Everyone, every organism is having its own food preference, including us. Among us also, some of us uh, uh, prefer some varieties of food. Some of us don't uh, prefer some of the foods, right? So food preference is quite common in all the organism. And uh, so shark is also have its own food preference. But the incidents, the bite incidents are happening just because when they get confused uh, or when it is in a curious way so some shark species have even abide the human because of confusion thinking that it is a uh, food for them or even when it is in the water column when a human is in the surface from the bottom they see they see like a, any kind of other uh, sea animals then it will try to come and eat thinking that it is a food so that is what actually uh, happened in uh, reality. So that is about the major behavior of the feeding frenzy and feeding habit. That is what one of the way the incidents are happening. The bite incidents have been happening very often. Then a little bit we should know about the reproduction of the shark because replenishing the shark in the natural environment is quite not as easy as uh, what the other uh, fishes are happening. Uh, so the reproductive diversity, uh, many research have been carried out on the reproduction uh, of a shark, but still uh, the reproductive diversity uh, makes a lot of challenges to conclude the studies uh, because of a different in brood size and ovarian cycle is different, depends upon the species and gestation period also varies, uh, depends upon the species, mating system and the use of a different nurseries, etc. So, so many uh, diversity in reproductive behavior also the shark species, is, as we uh, said that 524 shark species have been so far identified. And all these things are having a different level of diversified level of reproduction is there. So we have to study each species reproductive uh, cycle very separately, which is also quite not that much easy like what we do with the other small 
suspicious. So still we are, uh, it doesn't mean that there is no study. Studies are there, but still we have uh, having a lack of data to proceed with to conclusion. So evolutionary success, when we say, as we said, that a shark is uh, living from uh, millions of years earlier. So uh, at that time, uh, when we say the reproductive adaptation is quite high for the shark, that is one of the, uh, some of the studies have been very clearly uh, stated. So reproductive adaptation to the shark is in the higher end, so they can uh, survive at any diversified level of uh, uh, changes. One. One of the thing internal fertilization then embryo spent development stages within the mother's body production of a small number of large young ones so large young ones are directly coming out then hatch or bone as an active or fully developed miniature sharks so uh, these are the some of the diversified it depends upon the species variation is there so this is the adaptive feature for the reproductive uh, success rate of the shark so these characteristics will be reducing the number of potential predator and competition because once it is in the uh, in the infant stage it is in the body of the mother then definitely the potential predators will not be able to uh, get the shark then if it is coming out as a little bit uh, larger younger ones then definitely uh, easily the predators can't get it you know? so the competition also they can survive then increase number of the potential prey that is also available thus increase the chance of survival so this uh, reproductive diversity in the shark is actually uh, uh, mentioned as one of the biggest success rate for the sharks to survive in any of the adverse changes happened so far in the uh, on earth then think about the gestation period when it is coming so gestation period means the time of embryonic development uh, from fertilization to birth that is what is called as the gestation period so uh, here normally the gestation period for uh, different species it varies in a different gestation period so in general when we say one to two years uh, depends upon the species it varies so it is a very long gestation period we have only nine months so here around one 12 to 24 months it is going for the gestation period so again as we said the, earlier the reproductive by uh, diversity when we say uh, the gestation period is quite high and also the exhibition of the reproductive uh, behavior when we look into the sharks around the 40 percent of shark exhibits oviviparous 30 percent of shark exhibits oviparous and 30 percent of shark exhibits oviviparous so this diversity uh, makes uh, the succession rate of the survival of the shark so that is what happening uh, once again it is giving a, a very good su uh, successive rate uh, into survive in any kind of adverse changes so far happened on the earth so here you can see uh, some of the uh, egg of the shark i am showing so on the left hand side what you can see is the egg in a capsule format so you can see the smaller shark which is uh, situated in the uh, sh the <coughs> covering or in the case of the uh, shell and this is also will be attached uh, to the substratum and it will be getting uh, grown up and it will hatch out and come and also giving birth some of the species will be giving birth that is what you are seeing on the right hand side so that is giving birth so this is again some leg and uh, it will be hanging over the rocks and the boulders and from there it will be grow up and hatch and some are giving directly to the uh, birth to the uh, younger one so mostly when we see it is a slow growth as we said that the uh, maturity uh, stage is also quite high for the shark the uh, years are quite a uh, large years to get it into uh, maturity so slow growth and late maturity so the low fecundity when the maturity is very late then the whole lifespan when you take the fecundity level that means the production of the egg and uh, the new offspring level is comparatively low and uh, <clears throat> when we see the several species of elasma branches depleted by the fisheries that it is very confirmed now depletion of the uh, shark because of uh, irregular fisheries happen 
So the protection of uh, national regulations and uh, were added in 1999. United States National uh, Marine Fisheries Service uh, candidate list for under the threatened and endangered species. So 1999 actually we formulated a very clear uh, uh, database for the shark all over the world and we have uh, listed them under the threatened and endangered species. So 1999 is not too far from the present year. So recently only we identified it, that it is the uh, threatened and endangered species. So uh, international concern has been emerged for the sustainability of shark fisheries. And uh, in 1980s, late, late 1980s, it started. So even then, uh, to implementation, it took a long time. So uh, early 1990s, the uh, shark fisheries expanded globally. And uh, that will be mainly based upon the fin market shark fin market not for the flesh even now the shark uh, fin market is quite high than the flesh so that only the majority fisheries is going on with the shark and especially south asian countries are very much fond of the uh, shark fin soup and uh, mostly it is the biggest market uh, for the shark fins uh, ninth conference in 1994 the <clears throat> uh, parties of convention on the international trade of endangered species like citus adopted a resolution the status of international trade in shark species so uh, citus took a uh, stance in 94 uh, with the shark trade this shark trade include everything they include everything in the sense the shark meat skin fin bones teeth everything anything in relation to the name consists with the shark then it is under the uh, <coughs> international trade law is applied over that one and it is in under the punishable act now so 1999 again fao uh, developed an international plan of action for the conservation and management of shark so ipoa shark uh, has been widely followed by majority countries and uh, most of the countries have been signed for that one and they are uh, working upon uh, to the IPOA uh, uh, action plans. And based on that, uh, many of the regulations and uh, uh, restrictions for the shark fisheries have been implementing all over the world in majority countries. And uh, for the purpose of uh, IPOA shark, the term shark includes all the contractors, not only the shark. The sharks, batoid, chimeras, and all the organisms are included under that particular act because that is also uh, partially endangered uh, and threatened species so they all are included under the single name shark in ipoa shark so around 60 families with the uh, uh, within the living orders of chondritics when we say around 500 species living shark and over 600 species of batoids and uh, 50 species of uh, chimeras it's a very old uh, uh, existence on earth so New species are also uh, consistently we are uh, describing with a different different minute variation in the species level. And uh, IUCN uh, shark specialist group, SSG, uh, around 62 shark species out of 226 are assessed as currently with the threatened with the extinction in 2003. And uh, then onwards, it is uh, strictly prohibited uh, for any kind of utilization of that particular species of shark all around the world. And it is under the severe uh, punishment uh, legal punishment act it has been brought so uh, when this kind of uh, uh, utilization we will taking out the shark from the marine environment so it is yet another way when we see in the ecological point of view it is uh, the removal of a shark means a top predator is removing from the ecosystem so definitely it will be affecting the control over the main prey and uh, the predator relationship so what will happen there will be a second and third degree effect on the non-prey species also in the ecosystem uh, will affect and that will create total damage to the tropic linkage into the marine ecosystem so the whole ecosystem will be vanished if it is totally wiped off the sharks are totally wiped off or totally depleted as than the normal level so that as we discussed earlier also it is quite important uh, into the marine environment existence it is not a danger to the marine environment actually so here you can see uh, a blue shark it's actually the photograph taken uh, in uh, 1974 by the national marine fishery service 
uh, it is uh, the 26 embryos you can see that it is out actually they have been uh, the fishermen caught this shark uh, in a, uh, their fishing operation and when they cut open they could able to find around 26 embryos uh, within the shark so in other ways we can say that at a time they killed 27 sharks and the future shark generation which is supposed to come out of these all 27 shark so that is the way we do uh, calculate in the managerial uh, fisheries management level so one fish into one particular fish will produce how many uh, offspring and based on that we will be calculating the depletion rate so here in effect we can say that 27 shark is that and other way also we can say that these 27 shark will be reproducing another uh, uh, number of sharks and those things so it is actually affecting as a sequential level when we take it is totally affecting the population adversely so here the south african dragged tooth shark uh, for the embryo uh, you can see so it is uh, the stomachs are flat with the no visible yolk so mostly it is consumed and it is ready to hatch and also they sometimes exhibit the prenatal cannibalism shark is also some of the species will exhibit the prenatal cannibalism that is uh, they consume the small so this is also uh this is obviously it, it is a, uh, the particular species a behavioral pattern but this also reduces the shark no it, it, they themselves is with the cannibalism they are reducing it then the teeth of shark why the shark is having teeth of course holding the prey that is a fact not catching the human or eating the human but holding their uh preys what all things we have seen in the menu and also it is using to hold the female while mating time so the copulation and the mating time they hold the pectoral fin of the female by biting over the body and that is for that also the teeth is important for the shark so again it is clear that it is having a very basic importance so the teeth of shark is having a basic importance for its life cycle for breeding as well as for the for reproduction sorry feeding as well as for the reproduction so here you can see an embryo cut open of the nurse shark and uh, obviously that shark there's no live shark we bring and cut and open and keep it so showing the young uh sharks are you can see very clearly in both the uteri you can see so many young sharks are there so this is the dead shark when they got and they open and uh, just check how uh, they are present in the uteri so there are many numbers of pink sharks at present so this is one of the uh, shark embryo 15 mm embryo attached with the yolk sac uh, it is a small tail shark so we have seen earlier the uh, shark uh, egg with the uh, uh, the case and the same way here with the yolk you can see over that the shark is situated so shark gradually consuming the yolk and it grows up so here you can see after consumption a 43 mm embryo so the yolk sac become flaccid and as the shark started growing so it consumes from the yolk sac so here again the nose shark with the 250 mm embryo at the midterm level that is its uh, partially growth phase is completed so you can see what is the difference now the whole shark is as a bigger one when compared to the uh, total embryonic uh, level so it has mostly consuming and gradually it start consuming the natural food and uh, this is all about the behavioral pattern so now it is uh, clear for you that it is why and what way the shark is important and uh, whether it is really a threat to the human being or not so a little bit of the managerial part uh, also uh, when we look into uh, for the existence of shark in the world so uh, elasmo branches research based upon the diversity conservation ecology and fisheries have been flourished in the recent years after especially after 90s a lot of work has been started carrying out uh, by the people even though still we are lacking a lot of uh, hindrances are there as i said the specimen and uh, availability or those things then uh, research lacking in the indian ocean and uh, nowadays some of the areas it is started but even then 
the pace is comparatively less than the other organisms then also in the arabian water both the land based and the fishery independent data available but even then uh, it the data as i said that what all are the data what we are getting is uh, through the proper channel what it is coming but illegal things are so much is happening which is not at all falling under to any data then the gulf uh, receive a little attention so iran and uae when we take a major contribution to the global elasma branch landing they are doing but even a uh, little attention is taking place uh, to find its uh, uh, conservation aspects and the diversity and ecology studies in that area. In 1999, uh, uh, FAO uh, targeted the, made the <clears throat> based upon the targeted species or the bycatch, either uh, shark as a target species or as a, of course, the shark fisheries are there, allowed quotas are there. So then in that case, it will be a targeted species. When other fisheries, when we go, and uh, then it is as a bycatch. So uh, in this condition, the so International Plan of Action for the Conservation and Management of Shark as IPO, we said, developed. And uh, they fully developed the shark plan by uh, 2001. So it ensure a sustainable use of all contrastics. As we said, that shark means includes sharks, chimeras, and batoid fishes and a particular emphasis with the cache data. So strictly they started uh, uh, taking into the cache data and based on that, uh, the shark plan has been started evolving. And uh, this uh, shark plan, even then uh, some of the uh, states are still not fully adapted to the shark plan. So uh, Kuwait and Qatar, when we say also not much reported the landing, reported the zero value to FAO, but even then, illegal landings are there which is unauthorized level it is going and which is not seen by even in the uh, fishery inspectors because on the uh, they are uh, even i have seen in the red sea area uh, many of the fishermen will be taking the fins in the middle of the uh, sea and uh, they will be directly the collector vessels will be there they will be selling to them directly collector vessels obviously for the fishers also will be there they sell directly to them and they throw the shark and come back so when the fishery officers will go uh, to the shoreline area and the portal area uh, to check, nothing will be found out. But in reality, they sacrifice the sharks. So these shark assessment reports or the plans submitted by the countries are not adequately addressed the issue. That is the major issue. Even now, even after we uh, started or another 20, 25 years are going on, still we are having a depletion in the shark because of this uh, issue, not clearly addressing to the unauthorized poachings and unauthorized utilization of the shark because it is quite uh, difficult to uh, deal with those kind of aspects too so some of the uh, major uh, principles of uh, ipoa shark is one is obviously the ensure the shark catch direct and non-direct fisheries uh, as a sustainable level then assess the threat to the shark population determine and protect the critical habitat and harvesting strategy and the principle of biological sustainability so these all are the way uh, we can protect the organisms clearly to the marine environment. Then identify and provide the uh, special attention to uh, vulnerable and threatened uh, shark stock. Then uh, based upon establishing and coordinating the FAT consultation within and between the states. So in that way also we can improve and develop the framework for the uh, sustainable fishery of the shark. And uh, minimize the unutilized uh, incidental catches of the shark. So that is also quite important. And in unutilized the incidental catches, we are trying to uh, reduce it so that we also we can rescue the uh, population. Then uh, the next uh, things when it comes, the contribute to the population of biodiversity and ecosystem, then minimize the waste and discard from shark catches and uh, full use of the dead shark. If the shark is dead, better to use it fully so that it will not be a waste. Then facilitate to improve species specific catch and landing data and monitoring. So that is also included in the IPOA shark. Even then, uh, there are certain hindrances are there. We will soon, uh, it is quite natural when we operate into field. Also facilitate the identification and reporting the species specific biological and the trade data also. But uh, along with the areas, we have uh, several work has been taking place so that we are getting minimized uh, to the uh, report of. Uh, uh unutilization uh utilized shark or throwing the shark it's all those things are up to certain level we were able to uh check 
so there are certain suggestion contents uh, for the shark assessment report is that one is the past and present trend for the effort and the yield so when we uh, look into the effort the directed and non directed fisheries and all type of fisheries will come under the effort of catching in either direct fishery for the shark and also the non directed fishery as a bycatch also it is coming then the yield for the physical and economic how it is utilizing then a stock assessment it is quite very very uh, difficult to do even i worked on that one so we could find a really uh, herculean task in that one to clearly assess assessment work we will be doing but exactly clear assessment of the stock uh, is quite difficult one because it is a migratory one so it migrates very frequently so it was it will be quite difficult to identify even though we are having the tagging system and other thing up to certain level we could able to manage then existing managing measures like a control of access to the fishing ground uh, then bycatch reduction uh, measures closed season closed areas sanctuaries etc that also can with the technical measures we are taking to bring down the uh, misutilization of the shark then the monitoring control and surveillance systems also like with the fishery inspectors and several other uh, international bodies are working uh, on ground as well as in the offshore areas to uh, regulate the fishery operation and uh, so many other varieties of uh, uh, activities are also with the ngos and the government part also taking place to find out or regulate the uh, fishery uh, level so that to manage properly so the effectiveness of the management measures is quite important when we uh, look into because any policy when it is into action then only it is uh, really effective then the possible modification of the management measure management measures we are uh, creating for a particular periodicity of time and uh, due course of time if we found that changes into that one then we have to modify it according to the changes happening then only we can proceed with the uh, better uh, result out so there are two factors are coming uh, the cause of depletion and the vulnerability of the shark so here some of the sharks have been shown with the endangered as well as the vulnerable level so mostly the depletion cause based upon the over harvest for their fin that is actually the over harvest only the for the fin they take the shark cut the fin and throw back then uh, caught as a bycatch then uh, some of them caught for the meat fertilizer things are not a much effective utilization of the shark so that makes the depletion of the shark uh, population in the marine environment and uh, vulnerability when we uh, look into the shark sexual maturity reaches after many years a reproductive rate or reproductive gestation period we said that it is around uh, two years time it is going so and the maturity phase also it is taking long years to get it mature so it is vulnerable because recouping is not as easy as the uh, like the other smaller fishes and relatively few younger ones have been uh, hatching out so that also replenishment won't be uh, as easy as how much we are taking it out then a long gestation period up to two years also making it more vulnerable uh, for its existence so these are some of the major causes for the organism which is facing for the getting to endangered so here are some of the features i want to share with you so it is in uh, uh, Bengal area, you can see the, how much uh, quantity of the bigger sharks they have caught and bringing. And uh, we know that how much value for the shark meat is uh, there, how much it is uh, uh, frequently taken in the market. And definitely, fin is one of the major target for this thing. And also, the liver and the skin on those things, not particularly for the meat, by sure. Here you can see how much shark they are brought and they just do the finning and leave the shark back this is one of the uh, south asian country i don't want to say the name of the country and this is one of the biggest uh, shark market the aerial view so by seeing the heap of the sharks at one stretch you will get a clear idea that how much quantity of shark per day is fished and fishing is taking place and bringing into the market it's quite large than what we think about this is one of the commercial uh, shark fin uh, producing area so they have kept it for the drying to uh, take it for the uh, marketing for the soup 
so you can see the number of how much he trace uh, it is only one portion i have taken this photo so how much any trace will be there like this so how, that shows how many sharks have been sacrificed only for the fin so now it is very clear for uh, you that who is the real attacker shark or human so do we have to be afraid of shark or not if the myths what we learned earlier uh, we were having it is a truth or the realistic fact we have seen for some of them with that you know that now myths are only the myth but the facts are the reality so this is what i had to emphasize on uh, the fear of shark so there is nothing to fear on the shark because it is also one of the organism or one among the animal living on earth or have a right to live on earth like us and it has to live and obviously it is living in their environment which is a marine environment and we have our own environment which is land so we go to their environment and getting a bite from them and we are telling that they are dangerous uh that is not the right way like somebody coming to our house and uh, hitting us and going back means what we say the same thing so let them live in their environment peacefully so that is what uh, all i want to convey through this uh, particular uh, webinar so sharks are to be conserved because it is very important for the mankind by sure for the existence of earth so uh, thank you all for listening and thank you bcf india for organizing uh, and giving a chance for this uh, presentation and thank you all